just uh, sliding down behind it here. So we're out on a warm but snowy day and we're gonna do some ice fishing. And the twist, oh, snow on everything. The twist is we're also doing a primitive fire build challenge. So we're gonna try and make some build drills out here so we can have a fire and hopefully cook some fish. <laughs> See how this goes? Semi-ride it. Semi-ride. All right. It's steep here. I don't know if you can appreciate it on the camera, but it's always harder coming up. Just let the weight of the sled kind of drag you down and steer it. Try not to dump all your stuff. Well, this spot's probably as good as any, but maybe better than others. Um, we can tuck our fire up here on shore, and there's a good supply of um, fire starting materials. So, first order of business will be to get a couple of holes drilled and get those lines working for us. And then I'm going to show you what's on hand here for building a primitive bow drill set or a bow drill set from scratch. This is one of the biggest problems with some snowshoe harnesses. They tend to get this big ball that accumulates on the end of the uh, strap. I don't know how that exactly happens, but you almost need a knife to uh, smash it off sometimes. When it swings around, it gets right underneath your foot and you're walking all crazy. Well, <clears throat> got my uh, tip up and one jigging rod. And what I forgot to bring was an ice scoop. So lucky for me, it's plus one degrees out and I brought a towel. So I can hand scoop and then dry off. Unfortunately for me, this is a primitive fire starting challenge video, so I don't yet have a fire to go back and warm up at, because we have not started that yet. Get the lines in the water first. Brr. All right, now, got a minnow hooked up here. So we had a choice between shiners and chubs and people prefer different ones on different lakes and we're going to uh, use chubs here so find they stay alive a little longer especially if you want to keep them at home for a few days between fishing adventures they're just so much hardier Oops. and lively, jumping out of your hand all the time. So I'm going to hook this guy through the tail if I can, like so. I'm using a fine wire snell hook on um, on this 20 pound test line and I've fished this spot before I remember it is not deep here but it'll get deeper as the holes go out further into the lake but here probably, probably just six or eight feet 
um, who are fishing for a stocked splake and in my experience they tend to cruise around in the shallows quite a bit looking for food so hopefully they come cruising around looking for this food all right well we have lots of uh options here some cedar something's already scraped the bark on this side of it maybe squirrels it's scraped all the way up probably squirrels stripping it for nests um, and I'll make a, a little bearing block with a piece of uh, hardwood this is the kind of thing I'm looking for over here so this is a dead standing cedar it looks bone dry and what I need to do is see if there's enough there to cut a slab or a hearth and cut a spindle for the spindle. Pretty solid. beautiful it's wide enough if I split a piece off of there should be able to make a hearth and then if I split a narrow piece out should be able to make a spindle too so I just need to find a little flat spot to work here's a working surface another dead cedar kind of uh, Andy. Away. And then uh, I wonder I wonder if this right here is straight and dry enough for my spindle. That might work. Take this off of here. It's flat on the one side. I don't think that's going to make a good spindle. But uh, this other one over here, that one might work. So let's play with this piece first and see what we can do with it. Whoops! I don't want to get it too snowy. piece There's another piece. Oh yeah, this one's going to be better, I think, for a hearth board. It came off a little more square. Let's see if we can trim it up a bit. Good. Let me cut this in half. That might be the right 
thickness and then notch myself out a flat <coughs> flat work surface here should make a difference with my splitting okay That's too thin. This piece here isn't bad. I just have to, this is the outside of the board. It's damp. So I'm gonna split that outer edge off. Smells good, cedar. That'll uh, trim up into a good hearth board. Now, spindle. Do I want a branch? Pretty big. They're already nice and round. Or do I want to try and trim a round spindle out of a triangular All these pieces for kindling later. I don't know about this. That'll make a round spindle. I don't know. Kind of feeling the kind of feeling the branch. This branch is going to be in frame here, but this is the one I'm going to take out. Cut it down low. Ooh, it's soft. It's rotten. <clears throat> I better stick with the uh, carving one. So there's the start of our bow drill set. Dragonfly. Good, uh, Good bushcraft knife, right size, right weight, right shape, and should be good for what I want to do here, which is to take this odd shape and turn it into a spindle, a straight spindle, ideally, so my uh, spindle's not skittering all over the place. Now, a smart guy would keep all these for their fire after and I guess I'm just gonna let them fall on the snow and then pick them up after as long as I don't step on them they shouldn't uh, shouldn't be in too bad of a shape so this knife is uh, made by tops but it was designed by Canadian Bushcraft. I think it was a collaboration between uh, a few different guys there. I'm not 100% sure on the origins, um, but it is a Canadian Bushcraft design, which is a fantastic bushcraft school in Ontario if you're inclined to uh, get involved in uh, something like that. They run some really great courses and uh, they have a good Instagram account, lots of good information, Facebook page, I think, website. Um, so definitely worth a look. OK, 
Got a nice view of the lake here. Can see my lines. Um, I have different uh, goals and rules <clears throat> on this outing than Chris has. Um, so I brought some snacks with me. Um, although it's his intent to also hand make a bow drill set and catch fish and cook it. Um, which I will also do if I can, but I brought some chips. Anyway, I'm going to turn this into a spindle and move just a little bit. I'm just on the edge of the tree and there's snow falling, so I'm going to move out a couple feet so I don't get covered in fallen wet snow. It's pretty round. It's slightly curved. I guess we could try and take some of that curve out of it. It's not going to spin true if it's uh, got a big wonky curve in it. Actually, this <clears throat> was the top end of that stump, so there is some water penetration probably for an inch and a half down. That can be the bearing surface anyway. This will be the dry surface here that goes into the hearth. Some more curve there. It's kind of neat. I can see the curve looking down the shaft and then I can see it reflected in the camera image but you guys can basically see the same thing that I'm seeing when I'm checking this for straightness. Like it might be close enough. Got a nice pile of kindlings. Tinder kindling here piling up as well. I think... Yeah. I think she's gonna mostly work. This is mostly straight for being eyeballed. Okay, set that aside and I'm gonna pick up pick up all these nice tinder pieces and uh, put them somewhere dry because they'll come in handy later. <coughs> And this big piece here, that's the piece that Chris went and uh, he cut a bigger piece for a hearth board. So we talked about uh, a couple of different uh, mechanics and plans and then we decided instead of us each doing our own bow drill, we'll just collaborate on one with just materials found on site. Um, and a piece of paracord from our kits. We're not going to make cordage on this trip. Um, anyway, but this will make us a wider, thicker board. I'm just going to take the axe and trim the outside edge off and the inside edge off until it's actually got kind of a board shape to it. And this stuff here is going to burn perfect. These are great. This is like a feather stick. So I'm just going to have to find somewhere dry to uh, keep it out of the weather, which might just be in my sled. I brought a tarp and we'll just cover it up. The water building up on top. Okay. Okay, 
want to trim this uh, baseboard up and I'm going to use these as a, as a chopping base for a work surface. So trim off any loose split pieces here and then I wonder that might be that might be tinder bundle material maybe more good kindling material coming out of here. bark side. You can even see that it's damp on that bark side there, where it's been more exposed to the weather. Well, we're taking all that off. Ooh, there might be a knot there. Just a little one. Finishing touches on this, smooth it out. Get the sides flat. All right, guys, we're going to do a trial run. See how our uh, hole drill works. You gonna kneel on that? No, that's gonna be our base. Oh, smart guy. Yeah. I was gonna make a catcher, but we can have both. Oh, yeah. Although, maybe we'll, so this is gonna be, that'll be the top. We're just gonna flip it when we're ready to go. Okay. Does that make sense? Nope. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you're keeping it dry underneath. That's right. All right. I'm gonna pick one side to be dry. Stump under here. Oh, we don't have a bearing block yet. No, we need a bearing block. Oh, yeah. Okay. We'll be back. Right. Trial run. Hold up. Yep. Well, we don't have a notch cut in this or anything yet. No, no notch yet. <clears throat> Comes later. Okay. 
So we don't have uh, even a tinder bundle made yet. No. But we're not going to make a tinder bundle if this is a complete failure because yeah. we're not starting again. I'm a little bit concerned about my uh, bow. It's a little flimsy. Mm. My preferences. Yeah. <clears throat> but we'll see. So yeah, we got no, no notch in there yet. We're just going to do a burn for now. So this has to be flat. Flatter. Flatter? Flatter. It is flat, it's just not level. Yeah. <laughs> sure. I don't know if it'll get level. You want to try and pick it up? Uh, yeah. No, it's in there, eh? Nope. I think it's because it's sitting on this log a little bit. Yeah, maybe. You want it to be flat, flat. Okay. Just move it over that way a little bit and I'll jump on it again. Level, leveler, leveler. Okay, should do. You guys still see the mayhem? <clears throat> we'll see if that sits up properly. It might, it might want to go for a ride. I may end up not using it. I want to get the right orientation. So we're not going to use it. Okay, just going to go right on the snow, yeah. right? Executive decision. Okay, we're just going to. We're gonna have a fight with Mother Nature, which we're already doing anyway. Yeah, these are not ideal conditions. So this is not gonna it's not gonna do very much right now. Anyways. Oh here, we can hold that. We need a little divot. I'm gonna make a little tiny divot. Uh, maybe. Woo! I'll bore that for a second. You don't want it to be too close to the edge. We'll go out a little bit more. Little tiny divot. All right, I got it for now. Okay. Oops. Fighting with Mother Nature. Okay. No. So I'll just do the burn in. Okay. For now, see. See what happens. I need help, yeah. I might need your help there, you might need to jump in, but... Good. Yeah. But the string is loosening. Yeah, yeah. So there's a lot of slippage, so we're gonna straighten the, or take some of the tension out of the string now that it's stretched out. It's also wet. And then, uh, I mean, it's gonna work. Yep. We just might, we'll have to fight it. Yeah. A little bit more. So, oh yeah, it smells really good. So we're gonna <clears throat> cut the notch in there and put together a tinder bundle. And then we'll be ready for our real run. Real run, okay. All right, we're gonna get a few different materials to make our tinder bundle. This is picking some grass that he saw, which will help to hold the shape. And we're gonna go over here to this yellow birch, because I saw earlier that it's got lots of good dry stringy bark on it. And we're gonna collect that. And not the side of the tree that's getting snow on it, but this affected side here. So this is gonna be good burning material, but also the stringiness will help to hold the shape of the uh, tinder bundle. Okay. So what we want to do with that is get it 
right inside a dry pocket. And I got this dry pocket in my middle layers here. So there's all the birch bark. And we'll get our next material. Oh, I like the look of this. So here is a live cedar tree, except that it has a dead core running all the way down and could have easily split some nice dry kindling pieces out of here. Look at that. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to scrape some big fluffy pieces of bark off here with our knife. So... A dragonfly again. Just had it in my pocket because my belt is underneath all my layers. And what we want to do is start to get some nice fluffy scrapings here. So I'm going to mostly scrape in one direction so that all the Fluff starts to bundle up together. Like so. Slushy. A little bit. Yeah, a lot of it. Watch it'll go over your boot. Yeah. Oh. Yep. <laughs> Over my boot. Oh, brutal. Just barely over my boot, but over my boot. Not as bad as Puddle Lake. Snowshoes back on. Yeah. So, what are you calling this? Your zombie apocalypse bunker? Alright. Chris whipped up a uh, covered shelter here using some natural fallen log and. Uh, some balsam branches. Anyway, so this is where we're gonna have our fire. We're just getting set up. We put a base of some of the cedar shavings on the ground to keep everything off the wet snow. And we've got some of our fine firewood set aside for when we first have our flame bundle. And uh, this is where the magic's gonna happen. Yeah, the uh, challenge right now is that it's above zero but it's snowing so the snow is super wet and it's melting in the trees so it's kind of falling down as like wet drops or as snowballs and it's getting into everything <laughs> absolutely everything yeah you're cutting a notch yeah i'll do the notch i'm keeping the spindle dry i have a tinder bundle in my pocket as you saw here's the dried well wet <laughs> Grass that, yeah, the, uh, the grass is no good. We're not using it? I don't think so. Okay, not even just to hold the shape of the bundle. Like. <sighs> it's so wet, dude. Okay, it's then we'll set it aside. So and wet. some white birch bark <laughs> that's been collected. Some wet birch. Yeah. What isn't wet anymore? We're gonna make the fire right on top of the fire, I think. Yeah. I'm gonna try anyway. Yeah, yeah. This is a little bit of a hovel. It's not the exact place to be doing it, but you know, it's what we got. I was going to bring my multi-tool so that I'd have a little no saw. tiny saw. That'd be handy. But I forgot it. We might use the saw on this. Let's yeah. Let me just, we just grab it. Yeah, maybe. Yep. I'll just trace it out with my knife. <clears throat> it's a big, a big, big, uh, oh. big notch. everything dry here yeah yeah it's not a very big uh, space <laughs> it's not a dry space nope. not the way I prefer to do it but okay. no. <clears throat> see how it works 
lacks the precision. Yeah. And do you drill to the middle of the hole or to like? Yeah. Yeah. So it's not it's not to the fattest part. No. So your camera's still rolling or not? Yeah, it's still rolling. So what I do is I try to end up snowballs in the middle of the hole when you're finished. Yeah. Um, and obviously we haven't used the full spindle yet. Right, so oh. it's gonna be end up. This, yeah, yeah, it's gonna go out to here. So it's actually maybe not. Maybe too deep. Maybe too deep. But it just means it'll collect more, and we'll have to heat it better. And then I scoop the end out. So we probably don't need to do it on this notch. It's a huge notch and a huge spindle for that matter. Yeah, like everything's overbuilt. But over time, you're gonna be shaving more and more off, and it's gonna get shorter and yeah. skinnier as you get some of that grooves out. But uh, I usually. We'll cut even the bottom out. Flare it out a bit. Flare it out so that it has some place to sit and get yeah. hot. But I think on this one, it's probably like overdone anyway. The next thing we'd have to worry about is like arm space and everything here. Yeah. So, what does a tinder bottle look like actually? Fantastic. <laughs> is it wet? No, it's in my pocket. I buried it deep. So that's going to fill up. That's going to be a big notch. And then what we're going to do is we're going to transfer it to um, one of these. Yeah. Hopefully that'll ignite, even though it's like the wettest shit in the world. Um, so maybe not that yet. Let's fill the notch up first before we take that out. Okay. And I've got, you have a, like a decent place where we can put that because I've got some I, other I just have my pocket. You want to combine that with this? Okay. Whoa, loads. There's a piece of Kleenex in there. Is that cheating? Yeah, I'll take that out. <laughs> it's probably wet. It's probably all boogers. It's all boogers. No, it's not even used. Actually, it is used. <laughs> okay. okay. So if you want to work that a little bit together, sure. to make a nest okay. right now. Okay. Because um, we've got to fill this notch up first. And I'll, I'll ask you for an assist if I need you, but okay. probably more to finish it. Let's see where we're at. Looks like a nice little nest, eh? How wet does it feel? Uh, like slightly damp. <laughs> it doesn't feel bone dry. Yeah, I don't know if it's gonna go then. But we'll see. That'll be the uh, weak point. And safe in my pocket. <clears throat> it's pretty crummy all around. She's getting wetter and wetter and wetter. This might be the first failed survival challenge ever. Uh oh. Don't talk like that. The history of. It's just wet. Like everything's so wet. Yeah. The base is so wet. Are you ready to step in if you need to? Yeah. Sure. If you want to take a little bit of pressure off that, and you grab the bow and put your top hand up. Yep, just like that. Good. Just get a good, good pace going. The gear needs to help me off camera here. Yeah. I'm just going to keep going because we got to fill a huge notch up. Yeah. Wait, you mean it's not done when you get smoke? No. <laughs> I'm just trying to fill that notch up right now. Oh, it's working. The rope is slipping, so I'm yeah. using my hand to take up a little bit of that that uh, slack. So let's wait for a second here. Okay. 
So we're getting a lot of top friction. Which I'm gonna correct right now. We're getting a little bit of a notch build yeah. up. But I wanna take some of that top out. Yep. So just tighten it up. Yeah, I just want it less uh, friction at the top end here. water in there getting some <laughs> yeah there was a drop pretty much right in there okay let's try this again so once I get the rhythm then you can jump in and we'll just keep going thanks okay. yeah. Go. Number two. Yep. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Tighten that rope up again. Oh, I just caught a drip that was going right in there. Here, watch your hand there. Okay. It's gonna be a tough one, dear. It's gonna yeah. be a tough one. If it was uh, sunny out, <laughs> we would have it. No problem. Okay. This is the worst conditions ever. Your bow's on the wrong side. <laughs> oh, thanks. Oops. Whoa. Hold on. Yep. So put your hand on top of mine. Yep. Okay. Now don't twist this because that's how it popped out. Okay. So just straight down. Okay. Twisted. Did you feel your twist there? A little bit. Yeah. We keep losing all our... Our dust? Yeah. Some of it's in there still. Keeps moving. It keeps getting splashed on. This is going to be hard, guys. This might be a... I don't know. I'm not looking... I'm not feeling very confident about this, Jerry. <laughs> No, the conditions are definitely stacked against us. Oh, brutal. Okay. We'll have to eat raw fish. <laughs> if you catch a fish. Yeah. So maybe don't touch the top. Okay. And just, you might ha actually you might have, you're gonna have to just to stabilize yourself. So, but keep it, put your hand over top of the spindle part. Okay. Right there and keep that. Okay. Not too hard at the start, but. Whoa. Yeah, that's too tricky hard. with two people. Too hard at the start. Do you want to go the main and I can do the help? Sure, give it a try. It might be harder for you to get the... <clears throat> so you're used to the inner bearing gap, so... I'll try one more time here. Okay. Let me get started and then we can jump in. in the top, right? Eh? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. It looks wet here too. Because the top's dry. Yeah. The top handle is dry and the bottom is like this is dry but the base is not. No. Here I'm gonna give you that here.
All right, guys, we've got a bit a bit more room to work around here. It's flatter. It's uh, trees are not dripping on our head as much, but it's still dropping water. The base is soaked. The spindle is soaked. The only thing that's really dry is the thing that shouldn't be dry. <laughs> this thing. So we'll try it again. Let's see what happens. Start to make some good smoke at the bottom though. Yeah, I see it's plowing out the top. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. And then once it gets too far yeah. gone, it just goes. Yeah. Um It's making more smoke at the top than the bottom again. For sure it is. Yeah. yeah 100%. <clears throat> so, that's it for the primitive fire starting. That's just, uh, just the conditions are a bit too challenging for us today. It's soaking wet and snowballs keep falling out of the trees. And then even out here, there's just like everything's wet and wet and wet. So we were able to get dry wood by sourcing those good materials. I've got a nice tinder bundle in my pocket still, um, but it's just uh, just kind of working the board, not working out for us. So we're gonna carry on with our fishing, hopefully uh, catch something, and maybe we'll have a fire after just with the old lighter, get it going. Um, I'm gonna hit up some snacks and uh, see what the day brings. Snacks. Yes, please. Burritos. Let's see what else is under the tarp. Snacks. I ate all the Doritos. Oh, yes. My first Ultra S chips of the year. That might be good. Maybe something healthy. All those healthy options. I have a banana and an apple and an orange. I think it is often the case that the uh, quality of your snacks determines the quality of your fishing experience. Do you agree? If the fishing's not good. If the fishing's not good, it makes all the difference. Yeah. If the fishing's good, it maybe doesn't matter so much, but... No, no time to eat. The only thing, you, you can't control if the fishing's good or not, but you can control the quality of your snacks. Right? That's what I think. Uh, I'll tell you about my boots, because I've had them for uh, a really long time, and I like them. And... Um, these are Neos, and I think they got bought by the Muck Boot Company because when I see Muck Boot advertisements on Instagram and Facebook, I see them advertising these Neo navigators in the same panel. Um, and what they are is an overshoe. So they're um, a boot that you would pull on over your sneakers or your other boot. Which is nice if you're especially driving somewhere and you want to just have your sneakers for pushing your pedals. You don't want to have a big pair of winter boots where you can't tell the gas from the brake. Um, then you can just slip these on as you get out of your vehicle. Anyway, they um, are waterproof. 
up to here and then I rolled up to have a this extra bit kind of hiding in the cuff and I rolled that up because the slush is so nasty today um, there I'm just wearing my other shoes underneath so they're pretty comfy for that sometimes I've even uh, just worn a big pair of slippers underneath and uh, if I'm in like a hunt camp or something with my slippers or my moccasins and then you want to go outside and it's snowy or muddy or whatever you slip these on over top and they just kick off and on pretty quick uh, these ones have a bit of extra insulation in them and the waterproofness and they work pretty good so uh, I like them and I'd probably buy another pair if and when these ones ever wear out I use them all the time we're kind of toying around with a few light bites, but um, I think we're going to wrap it up here. We did not get the fire started. We did not catch fish, but we had some really awesome snacks. We spent the day outside and we made the most of winter. So is that a win or is that a loss? You decide. Sometimes it goes how you want and sometimes it doesn't. And uh, this time was kind of a mixed bag, but uh, we'll see you on the next one.